Fire chief, not fire marshal. <laughs> <laughs> Different game. Different game. Well, let me tell you right now, if too many people come in, I'm leaving. I, I swear, there's just too many people in here. Well, there has to be some kind of a limitation. Okay. If we have people standing, if we have people out there, I don't get into that kind of thing. places with them. And you may not have a chance to sign in. You do come in. So it's very interesting. So if anyone hasn't had a chance to speak to them, you know, all of you. There's some people here for the first time. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, there have to be. Do we, do we have to hear people who don't live in that thing? If it affects them, I guess. I don't know. I would think that too. Yeah, that's that's been our protocol. That's why, I, that's why I asked, where do you live, you know, and if you don't well, live in Woodfin, then you shouldn't be. You ought to ask every one of them. Yeah, but it's your property abuts. Yeah, yeah, if your property abuts are looked at, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that makes sense. I can understand it. And we're <laughs> There's 13 names of the letter. It's just Yeah. I don't, I don't like him. Really. Like, like here, he's just like blowing smoke, right? He's like, he's just playing to the fire, to the fire chief is problematic. That's, that's that, that, one fire chief. That is not so because I talked about it when I come up here, and they said the fire chief would sign off on it, but it was not ultimately his decision. And there's three fire chiefs that serve the town of Wood. And they're not volunteers. No. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Let me just see what time it is. It's six thirty-two. Okay. Call the meeting. Ten minutes left. Call the meeting to order. Um, how many people are here? for the first two items on the agenda. Okay, a couple of Chris, you, you are. Okay. Did you not get an agenda? Aren't they at the... Okay, the first item is approval of, oh, excuse me, the meeting minutes. The second item is um, public hearing for rezoning of 198 Elk Mountain Road. Okay. The third item is uh, public hearing rezoning property located on Blueberry Hill Road. Okay. Okay. You guys are here for that. Uh, what, what I was asking, since we're so full, I hope you'll probably do it anyway, but once 
you we're finished with your items if you could go so that there will not be so many people it won't be so congested not that you probably want to sit and listen to the third item if it doesn't affect you anyway right <laughs> okay so I called the meeting to order um, I'd like to approve the agenda anybody have any you'll move to approve it yeah. okay all in favor Aye. Okay. All right. Public comment. Since there are so many people here, I'm going to read this. Everyone wishing to address the board must sign up with the town clerk prior to the meeting. Okay? Each speaker will be recognized by me when it is their time to be heard. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker and the time allotted uh for the public comment will be at the discretion uh, which, which will be at my discretion um we have to do this for each item correct or is it is it's 30 minutes for the whole for everybody public comment is one item on the agenda the, the, the other item is a public hearing separate and specific to that item that item so, so right so for the first so what we'll do then is we will start off with um 30 minutes i think that's yeah, too long. That long enough with this many people well um, they're all they're all here for different reasons well there's 13 here on this list but what if they're not all here for the same i understood that this is intended for public comment section so if people want to speak before the public period they may opt out of this particular section of the summer. So you have 13 people signed up. 13 people are signed to speak. So that would be 39 minutes if everyone wants to do public comment as opposed to an individual item. Right. Okay, so we'll do, we'll do 45 minutes. That should be enough. Okay? And um, let's see where we're going here. Okay, the first um, item on the agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes. And we have approval of minutes. That's new business, correct? Mm -hmm. We have the approval of minutes from July 22nd. Well, you, you need to have the public comment section now. Open up the floor for public comment before you... Before any new business. business. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's open the floor then for the public comment. No, no, it's not that. It's this right here. Yeah, yeah. And um, as I said, three minutes per person, a total of 45 minutes. So, Tony Brewer. Is this on, are we talking about barbecue? Okay. The, the, first, the first item is the public hearing for, for not, nine, 198 Elk Mountain Road. Nine. Okay, so nine. you're for, which? Anything. If you would if you allow me um, to, Go ahead. to sort Go of ahead. orchestrate. So for each agenda, for every agenda, that, for any public body, there's a public comment section, which is general. You may have a specific item you wish to talk about. But also each agenda item on this particular agenda has a public hearing that is specific to that one item. So there's actually four opportunities to talk, but each person would just talk once. And you pick which one of you fall into which category. We have a sign-up list here. There are 13 uh, names on this which is intended to be for the general public comment portion of the agenda, which is where we are right now. However, if you get to that and you wish to wait until the public hearing for the specific item, yeah. then you can just hold off on that and she'll okay. move to the next. Right. Well, thank you, okay, yours, Blueberry Hill. So how about M.E. Warwick? I'm also Blueberry Hill, but okay. I'm going to speak now. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll, I mean, I'll speak after her. Okay. So this is not a public hearing. This is the yeah. public comment, right? So, I mean, um, we're going to hear you either way. So if you wish to speak during the public comment, it doesn't negate your position or related to that position. However, if you were here to speak on a specific item, you probably should wait until that item comes up. Okay. Um, that okay. would be my recommendation. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. How about Eric Eg Edgerton? Number four, okay. How about Kelly K. 
Cowan? Um, I'm here to discuss the ordinances. Uh, so I That's four. also four. four. Thank you. Okay. Uh, how about Nathan Muller? I have a quick question. You've allowed 45 minutes for this time. When you get to the public hearing portion, are you going to limit that as well? Because everybody that's deferring, if, it's, if you're going to try and put everybody into that space, I'll talk out. I'll <laughs> Well, that's we're not hearing a, a, a we're not having a public hearing plus comments. Yes, we are. We're having three public public hearings plus comments. Okay, so um, no, we're gonna. You heard his answer. No. I didn't hear oh, that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, so, so it's at your discretion on how long you wish to hold the public hearing open. Is that right? Is that the chair's discretion for public yeah. hearing? So you may wish to hear everybody, or you may wish to limit the time for each one of those on its own merit. Now, from a public hearing standpoint, the, the time should be a reasonable amount allotted to allow people to speak. So, I mean, say if you have three yeah, minutes per person, we could right there. but if, 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 if you have a larger number of people for one topic, that time period should be longer. The general comments from Thanks, Thank you. Okay. Okay. So then, the, your microphone. Can you hear me? Then the general, com the general comments are anybody who wants to speak about anything. Anyone here for public comment? Public comment. Want to talk about just anything? One hand. Are you on this list? What's your name? Ellen Brown. <laughs> Hi, Ellen. Ellen. Okay, yeah. Ellen Brown. Okay, so uh, now I do. Yeah. Do you want to get up and speak? <sighs> My name is Ellen Brown. I live at 200 Jonestown Road. And since last spring, I have decided to get involved and find out what's going on in the Woodfin government. Mm -hmm. And I started attending meetings earlier about the Reed Street. I was a little alarmed about what was going on. And then when I heard about the bluffs, I thought, wow, I really would like to find out what's going on. And I applied to be on the planning board when this board switched into two. And now it seems that I'm in Nowheresville in some kind of strange position because we don't seem to be inviting me back to be on any committee. So I have a little bit of an, an irritation with the way I have noticed what's going on. And I just want to say to everybody, especially those of you that grew up in the 60s like I did and thought about some of the big movements and protests that were going on, I just want to say that there is a political power struggle going on here, that there that all of the parties involved have lawyered up. And that is alarming to me. That shouldn't have to be. And when we notice problems and we're concerned about things happening in our neighborhood that might affect my safety or might hurt my property or might be generally bad, then I would expect to be able to come in and talk to staff here and have a respectful audience and get some advice and encouragement. I would expect if I'm on a committee that we could all look at it together and that kind of thing doesn't happen. So before I run out of time, I just want to leave with this little phrase. Don't it always seem to go that we don't know what we've got till it's gone. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. And that was happening in the 60s, and that's happening here today because we're not caring enough to protect this paradise. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the comments are done, right? And now I can move on to the new business, the first item in new business. And that is to approve the minutes, right? The meeting minutes from July 22nd, August 3rd, August 23rd, September 13th, and September 27th. Do I have to do this all individually or can I do it all together? 
Okay. Anybody want to make a motion to approve all those minutes? All motion to approve. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Good. Okay. Now we'll move on to item number two, which is the public hearing for rezoning the property located at 198 Elk Mountain Road, further identified by Buncombe County Parcel Identification Number from R10 to R7. Is there anybody on this list who wants to speak to that? No. Okay. You should open the public hearing. Open the public uh, hearing. Say, you know, open the hearing. Uh, okay, I, I got you. And then call for anyone to speak. Okay, I'm opening the meeting at 6.44. Is there anybody who wants to speak on that issue? No. Okay. Then I'll close the session and of the public hearing. And at 6.45. Quick, quick, quick question. Was the, the person who was applying for that rezoning, was that his time to speak to? Because he's right there. Yeah. Just making sure. He, need, he needs, he needs yeah, to Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, this is all new to me. So. Yeah, it's new to me too. So I am the property owner of 198 Elk Mountain. Uh, it is R zoned as R10. I would like to apply for a rezone. I was here several months ago. It was approved, but got kicked back. Um, I still would like to go to the R7. My neighbors are all zoned R7. It's the property right in front of the fire department. Um, my intention would be with the, the lower setbacks would to be uh, build a new home, a smaller house, about 700, 750 square feet. The current residence is a lot bigger than I need. I'm getting the re ready to retire, so I'd like a smaller house. There would be no impact to the fire department because there'll be a new road coming off Elk Mountain, and then if the, the other driveway would come off a new street, so there would be no impact to my neighbors or the fire department there. Can you make it clear again? Is it the great big two-story house or is it the little one next to it that's empty? So it's a- The, the, it, the road that goes into the, to the uh, firehouse. So if you're going to the firehouse, is an old like um, brown shape. Yeah, on the right. It's the next one past that. It was, the, it was the little white bungalow looking house that's now kind of like this it's little olive green. Right in green. front of where okay. the church is. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. I thought I thought I did locate that. All right. Um, anybody have any any discussion? I am I am not allowed to vote on this particular uh, subject matter. I am I'm his realtor, so there is a possibility somewhere down the line that mm. I might have an, an intake. All I can say is that the properties that Mr. Whitkiss is owned in Woodfin. He has bettered for the town of Woodfin. He's not, as you can see from the house when he bought it, he has certainly made improvements to 198 to make it look nice. He does like living in front of the fire department, so that's not a deterrent for him. He is a, a firefighter. You might regret so, that. No. <laughs> um, but if, it, if I had a vote on it, I certainly would. Okay. I've, I've got a question too. Being the. Madam Chair, if I yeah. could. Just from, I know it's procedural stuff, but Go ahead. if during a y'all kind of wandered into discussion phase, oh, okay, and you probably ought to see if anybody else is supposed to speak and then close the public oh, hearing and then have that okay. discussion. Sorry. Does anyone else want to speak about 198 Elk Mountain Road? So, no. I'm, can I ask him a question? Uh, okay. How close is it to New Street? what you're talking about doing so the the property actually is from elk mountain to new street i'm familiar my, with saying my current so. <laughs> driveway comes off of new street correct but i'm working with dot to put a new one in i'm dealing with the sidewalk so you're putting the house behind the old one yeah okay what are you going to do with the old house so i'd, I'd turn around and sell the front one and then i would live in the back one. Oh, okay okay is is, is town staff gonna make a recommendation or statement of the facts um, or, uh, <clears throat> he, he's basically covered what I would have said. So he's down zoning from R10 to R7 mm -hmm. to replace the house further back on the property. Uh, okay. All right. I have okay. a question if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, the lot's not being split, though. 
Uh, it may down the line. Yeah. Yes. If you're going to sell it so all. For the purposes of rezoning, it would be. The setbacks are a lot less. One for parcel. Yep. So I, th I believe the setbacks on an R7 are 20, 10, and then 20% on the rear. And currently, as R10, they're 25, 15, I believe, um, and 25 or 20%. So. Okay. So you're just changing the setbacks a bit. And my, the neighbor adjacent to me, 200 Elk Mountain, uh, that is zoned R7. Um, and then all the neighbors there are all huh. R7 also. Okay. So it, it's more in line with the neighborhood. Any other questions? No? Okay. I want to, then we'll close the public hearing at 650. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody want to make a motion to approve? I need to ask a question if I can vote as well, since I'm a representative of the fire department. Oh, good point. So I'm the neighboring, You're neighboring right. to that property. You're a member of the fire department? I'm the fire chief. He is the fire department. <laughs> he is the fire department. Uh, I mean, that's, a, that's about as good as answer as I can say. Yeah, good point. <laughs> So I, don't, are you, are, I don't think you would have to recuse yourself, but if you don't feel comfortable, you can. I think it'd be best if I did. So. You, you felt like you had uh, an interest. So we still have Susanna, right? We have another right. people. Yeah. So. A comment for the rest of the board. It, it, is that what we're going to do now? Yes. Uh, you know, this is a, a, a trend in the country, especially in communities that need more housing, is to allow things like this. And I think within we desperately need new residents. So I'm going to be in favor of this. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I'm going to kind of second that. We are all the time looking for some sort of affordable, proper housing. We're not talking about a high rise here. Um, we're talking about a single family residence that will potentially be used for the long haul in Woodland. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. So does someone want to make, make a motion to? I'll move we approve the zoning request. Okay. Any second? Second. Okay. So, let's vote. Let's vote. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? No. Okay. Passes. Okay. Now we'll move on. I'm always over. I just didn't think it was Yeah, yeah. First I have to do the agenda item, then I open it. Okay, next we're going to move on to item number three on the agenda, which is rezoning the property located at. Is this 99999? Is that because it, it wasn't actually given an address? There's no structure yeah, it's there. A land, it's a land parcel, so that's okay. just their fancy way of okay. numbering it. Blueberry Hill Road, uh, further identified by a county parcel identification number. I'm not going to read it. From community shopping to light industrial. Now, I'd like to open the hearing for this item. And at 652. And the same applies. Uh, do I have to repeat that all over again? About uh, three minutes no. per person? No? Okay. So it's three minutes per person, and we're still working on it. Okay. So who on this list is here for this? Who's here for this? Oh, lots of you. Okay. Um, did many of you sign this? Okay. John? John? Noor? You're for number four. Okay. Okay. Just come up one at a time then. Whoever wants to speak for this particular item right now for Mulberry Hill. Somebody, somebody make the break. Where's that actually at? Oh, I don't know if he's on the list or not. That's where they just put the jiffy. Oh, they want it behind there. Oh, right. That's him. You're right. And so is the other one. Okay. Go right ahead. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You have to bear with me. This is the first time I've ever done something like this. My name is Tony Brewer. I live at 1 Blueberry Hill Road. 
and I am one of the one of the housing that is going to be majorly impacted with this. And the one thing that really gets me is that is that we bought this community because it was a quiet community and everything like that. Yes, we do have the highway, and yes, we understand there's a little bit of noise. But taking into consideration what we've seen on this plan, it looks like we do have a 100-foot buffer, but still, that's not enough. I'm sorry, that's not enough. Being a truck driver myself, I know how imperative the jake brakes are. And some of these truckers, they don't have mufflers on their jake brakes. Luckily, I do. But going up and down these mountain roads and everything like that, I consider, I take into consideration that jake brake as a safety for me and getting home to my two kids and my wife. So taking away some of the buffer that we have, we'll be able to hear that jake brake a little bit more. And I've got a 16-year-old daughter and a 7-year-old son. They're going to be majorly infected by the cutaway of all those trees because their bedroom is right there on that side of the house. Mm -hmm. I can't move their bedroom. There's no way for me to do that, so it is going to affect them. And, uh, and I understand that inside the, I know I have three minutes, but inside this list it said that there's only going to be like 10 cars coming through there per month. That's not true. That is false because coming into the location that we're at right now, you all know, you all see it. That's a high, 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 high traffic residential area. This is going to be affected majorly with traffic coming in. We've got the Vaveline now. Their interest is in our neighborhood. It has affected us going in and out. Mm -hmm. Not to mention that that spot where the Vaveline entrance is, that's a school bus stop. Mm -hmm. Our kids are down there. Mm -hmm. If we have another entrance coming in there, where's our kids going to get on at school? Mm -hmm. How safe are they going to be? So that's one thing that I'd like you to take into consideration. I know you know this, and I hope you think about that. But the big thing is, is that we're all here for a reason. We moved to the mountains for the reason. Some of us grew, here, grew up here. Some of us moved here because of the beauty. Taking away our nature is taking away from our beauty. And I hope you take all this into consideration, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. M.E. Warlick, yes. Good evening. Hello. My name is Emmy Warlick, and I live at 12 Blueberry Hill Road since 2018. This zoning request is a result of a complicated problem with a long history. My position is to deny this request. It is my understanding that the original deed stated that no roads would ever be built into the entrance of Blueberry Hill Road. Access to the present Valvoline Station was approved after a lawsuit begun by the neighbors against the plan that was first won, then lost on appeal. I understand that this decision was made after the owner was unable to get DOT's approval to provide access to the property more directly to I-26. The building of this access road to the Valvoline station has created an even more dangerous hazard, as he just mentioned, to an already dangerous intersection. Several accidents have taken place at the bottom of our hill, and I've had several near misses on Blueberry Hill Road with cars entering the Valvoline station without stopping. So for safety's sake, I'm concerned that changing the zoning to light commercial may open the property to much more traffic, should, uh, especially should the present storage unit not be built. Woodfin is already littered with many storage facilities, and we need to think more creatively about beautifying the corridor around Woodland Hills, which finds itself in a strange configuration of Asheville, Weaverville, and Woodfin. Uh, we're in the Woodfin water and sewer uh, area. Because preserving the tree canopy is an essential part of water management, and yet we as neighbors are not eligible to vote in Woodfin for measures to preserve our environment. I also note that the proposed light industrial zoning category includes such things as car washes. So I wonder why a Valvoline station, which to me seems very similar to a car wash, is not considered a light industrial activity, raising the question of why it received approval. Does this indicate a problem in maintaining zoning re uh, regulations, even uh, with the current category of community shopping on this property that it now holds? Thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay, who else would like to speak about this item? Anyone? Oh, yes. And did you sign the sheet? The sheet? Yes, I did. What's your name? And I live at five Blueberry Hill, directly behind the property that we're talking about today. And I apologize, this is not my comfort zone. I'm a little nervous. Um, but I looked up what light industry is. And although it is uh, typically less pollution than heavy industry, um, it actually has significant causes of pollution at times or risk of contamination. For example, electronics manufacturing, which often is considered light industry, can contain and create potential harmful levels of lead or chemical waste in the soil if there's not proper handling of waste products. So although we've got a proposal here that's for a storage facility, which I echo why we need another one in Woodfin anyway, I'm not sure what benefit there is to the community, we have no guarantee that just because that is the proposal, once it's changed the zoning from CS to LI, that that is actually going to be what facility is in that space. So we have the potential for someone else to come along or for the current owner to say, oh, wait, we found a buyer who's willing to spend more money and they're going to move in some type of manufacturing or some type of light industry that is not as uh, neighbor friendly, which I don't know that a three-story building, which I think needs to be clarified, says there's a 427,000 square foot facility on that small piece of property that will become an eyesore for not just the residents in my backyard and my children's bedrooms and my bedroom will have to look out upon, but that the entire neighborhood will have to drive past this horrible eyesore every day. Again, I echo Tony, I have small children. I have an 11 year old and a 13 year or soon to be 11 year old and a 13 year old that catch the bus down at the bottom of the street. I walk and run my dog. And it has always been a wonderfully residential, safe, quiet neighborhood. And even at five in the morning, I have almost been hit multiple times at the bottom of Blueberry Ridge at the entrance to the Valvoline because people do not care they come in off of Weirville as if there is nothing there and they just go straight into the Valvoline. I've almost had my dog hit, I've almost had my children hit, not just in my cars, but on foot. It is dangerous and it is disgraceful that nobody cares. There's also um, the issue of the fact that this property was purchased knowing the zoning and the restrictions. This property is not new to the owner. This property was bought knowing the zoning and restrictions, and it has been a constant battle with the owner trying to change the restrictions, the zoning, the clarifications, the court rulings. It's constant when they entered into the purchase of this property knowing full on what they were buying and what they were capable of doing with that property. It is not the residents' fault if they did not do their due diligence, but when we all purchased our residential pieces of property, we were given that the court rulings said they weren't allowed to put a, an entrance on that, on that street, and they have done it, and it has created more and more problems. We have a buffer of 100 feet that at times claim that we have a buffer of 100 feet where they are not allowed to do anything to the, the trees, the canopy, or the underbrush. And at times, the owner has also said to us, well, you never know. You might just get a big wall right up next to the border of your property. So I don't understand what limits this owner thinks there are or what they're trying to sell to their buyer. There's no guarantee that the buyer, once they buy it, will follow through with their plans to make this a storage facility. We do not get a guarantee of anything, and we are the ones on that street and all the people around, but specifically those of us who are on Blueberry Hill will be heavily impacted, negatively impacted, long-term negative impacts against our properties, our homes, our families, our val home values. So I just ask that we consider thinking about 
the residents of the area and what really is the best for Woodfin and for the town, for that area? Will this really be something that benefits our community? Will it really be something that benefits the high traffic that we already have and the problems we already have at that intersection? Um, so let's see if I have anything that I missed. Sorry, I know I have limited time. Um, I guess I just want to reiterate that just because they're saying it's a storage facility, you know, they, those things actually usually live in business parks or industrial parks. They live um, in investment parks, science centers. They can include a lot of different things. You can include paper making, which I don't know about any of you, but smells pretty bad to me. Plastic, leather, textiles, household electronics. You know, we're not just talking about a storage facility potentially going in there. So woodworking shops and metal plant operations often need heavy equipment in order to ameliorate the impact on the environment. And those things would also impact us because they would be on that property and being used mm -hmm. as well. So okay. Okay. Nice. thank you. Thank you. What's your first name again? Christy. Christy. <laughs> Uh, Christy, Christy, you didn't sign this, did you? Yes, I did. There's, there's two sheets. Hey, guys, there's two sheets. There's another sheet. There's, there's two sheets, and I was not the last person to sign. Thank you. So there's multiple more you can okay. Anyone else want to talk about the, this property? Yes, another person. Thank you. My name is Kathy Goff. I live at 2 Blueberry Hill Road, right. uh, and we bought our property in 2004. We've been through all the legal wranglings and everything, you know, was trying to keep it zoned the way it was, and uh, then, you know, we had to give up that. But this is really horrible because this wasn't seen coming. The other thing, I've all also been almost hit twice coming out from the oil place. So please don't, don't approve this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyone else want to talk about this? No? Yeah, okay. And what is your name, please? My name's Bernard Kesters. Uh, I have a vested interest in property up on Blueberry Hill Road. And the information that I looked at, that the town put out, talks about this facility. It's a three story, it's gonna be 36 feet high. It's gonna have 427,000 square feet. Interestingly enough, the property of 3.45 acres only has 148,000 square feet. I want to know how this is possible because it's not covering the entire property. So somebody hasn't looked at these prints. So that's number one here. You guys are responsible to say, yeah, this is what, what's going on. And it's not. So you don't know what's going on, number one. Okay, if, if you have 427,000 feet, square feet, you have 142,000 square feet per floor. And you, you look at that, the building itself is only 239 feet long, which means it has to be 500 feet wide. The property isn't that wide. So somebody needs to do some checking. They said there were blueprints that had been submitted for this already. If that's true, it sounds like a done deal. I don't know. That's what I was told, that there were blueprints already submitted. So either you guys are behind on this, or somebody here in the office has, has got paperwork that nobody's had its access to. The other thing is the traffic. The patterns of traffic, they've got kids down there every morning trying to, to get on the school buses there and also over at Angles. People are crossing that road, Merriman Avenue, 
at 7.30 in the morning. Did you ever try and get on the Woodfin exit there at, at 7.30 in the morning? It's horrendous. I mean, it's usually backed up so that you, could, you don't know if you can get in, on or off of that highway, especially coming out of Blueberry Hill. And so, you know, something needs to be done before any decisions are made here. The state needs to be involved. The county needs to be involved to try and get some type of crosswalk there, some type of light, some type of yield signs. You know, the whole thing seems to me like this, this particular owner is pushing this big time and everybody's buying in. And that, that's not right for the community. The, the people here are the ones who are going to suffer. She's not going to suffer. She's walking away. The owner's not going to suffer. He lives in South Carolina, it sounds like. So why, why are we doing this? You know, you, you want to come up with jobs. This isn't going to provide any jobs, maybe three. But that's not what you need. We need something more. Thank you. OK. No one else for that? Oh, OK. Keep going. What's your name? John Warren. John Warren. OK. <laughs> uh, once again, my first time doing this. So I apologize if I'm a little nervous. <laughs> uh, my wife and I recently moved in about six months ago, so we haven't been privy to the constant legal battles going on surrounding this. I've thought long and hard about this ever since I found out about this plant proposed project. And honestly, had I known this was going to happen or if this had happened a year ago, I would not have bought my house. It will impact property values significantly because people do not want to live near something like this. They don't want to take their lives in their own hands or in somebody else's hands every time they want to take a walk around their subdivision. Uh, Uh, one thing that I have noticed going through there that this is not a conditional approval. Looking at the other two major storage units in the Woodfin area, both are still zoned community shopping and I presume we're given limited approval to do this. Uh, that being said, I assume these storage units were required to be zoned light industrial for a reason. My uncle was a pl master planner outside of Atlanta for over a decade. They spend a lot of time coming up with these plans and do things the way they do for a reason. I do agree in their proposal that what they're proposing is very much not the definition of a small or a storage unit, as the traditional definition it would go. If anything, I would say it's more akin to a heavy industrial building as far as visual and impact goes to the community. Uh, Mills Manufacturing is unlike commercial. Other than for 20 minutes at five o'clock, I never even know it's up the hill. Whereas the storage unit on the other side of the highway uh, at the base of Reynolds Mountain is an eyesore. It's impossible to miss. Bellagio Bistro Community Shopping Center just across the road provides quite a few more jobs and in benefit, benefits the community, which I could say the same of all of the community shopping up and down the Weir World Road corridor. They provide local jobs, the majority of them are small, small local businesses, so their income gets reinvested in the community, not shipped off to South Carolina. They may provide limited tax income for the city, but it doesn't benefit those of us who live here. That, uh, ultimately, I believe I hit all my, all my topics. Uh, once again, thank you for listening to me and uh, giving this opportunity to voice our opinions. Okay. Now, I, I ask, excuse me, can I ask you guys in the audience, can I ask you, you and the people in the audience to not clap every time? 
that's okay with you guys? It's not a speech, it's just a, a hearing, okay? All right, anyone else for this? Anyone else for blueberry? No, for sure, done. Is the applicant here? Would you like to speak to yes. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize the applicant was actually here. Did you sign up? No? For the applicant. We were already, we thought we were already okay. on the agenda. Oh. Okay. Uh, but, but would you have let us speak if we weren't signed up? I'm serious. Well, he's. Well, we're the, we're he's, the applicant. He's the applicant. It's not, it's, it's not, he's not part of. He, he was going to speak no matter what, okay? It has nothing to do with a he the hearing. He is the applicant. He should have spoken first. Well. Well, I think I can address a lot a lot of the the discussion that's going along and, and some things that, Actually, it, it's that have been better. misconstrued. Yeah, yeah so I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, there's a couple things. I'm the applicant. Then you should have spoken first. Okay. Yes, okay. 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 No discussion, please. No discussion. All right. He is the applicant. He has time to present his case to us. You are part of the hearing and the comment part of it, which has nothing to do with him. Yes. Will we have time to make comments after his rebuttal? Okay. Um, I'm going to close the public hearing right now. Okay. Have you guys all given your comments about this? All right. You, it's not about rebuttal. You're not going to comment on his comments. Yes. But it is in the fact that had he spoken first, it would affect my comments in order to be able to adjust my my speech and my comments would have been adjusted having heard what he had to say. I maybe would have used my three minutes differently or had different or adjusted comments. And that's how it should have been presented to all of us appropriately. Why don't you, why don't you um, say it? Madam Chair and the Board, just um, you know, some questions come up about procedural matters regarding this. Um, Quiet, please. There's a you know, there's a public hearing, um, and the, there there would also need to be a limit on on the applicant. There, you can't that applicant can't, go, can't sure. go on forever, so you have to have a, a reasonable limit on them as well. But there's, during the closing, uh, the way you've done it is have a public hearing. You're going to have that, and then have the applicant speak. And that is a procedural matter that is up to this board about how that handled. And if someone in the public doesn't like it, that's, that's not, uh, they may disagree with how you handle it, but that's y'all's decision about how that's uh, managed. So, you know, from a standpoint of, of how you've handled it, as long as to close the public hearing, if you would then ask the applicant to make their, their presentation, again, you should probably get a reasonable limit on their presentation as well. Okay. So we need to close the public hearing. We haven't done that, okay? We're gonna close the public hearing right now at 7.18, okay? That's done. Now, we're gonna have the applicant speak. 
How long are you going to speak for? I don't expect it to be more than five or ten minutes, but I think it's critical based on what I've heard and I think what the community wants is for me to clarify um, some of the comments I've heard because it seems that there's been a lot of discussion in the community about this that is highly inaccurate regarding what the project is and apparently there's been a misprint on the plans regarding the size of it which also needs to be clarified and so what I'd really like to do is address the board concerns about it but first before I do that if I could address some of the concerns they brought up and clarify what this is and what this isn't so everybody can understand that maybe some of the concerns that they've exp expressed are in fact um, not going to be relevant in in the case of this project okay so then why don't you start like you said with addressing okay and then you can address us okay a few things that i've heard the community bring up that i'd like to address first of all is the size of the project it is a three-story project it is not 427,000 feet, which it definitely was brought up that you cannot fit a building that's three stories that size on there. The approximate gross size of the building is in the 70,000 foot range. It is a three story building and it looks very similar to an office building. So, to give you an idea of what this is not, it is not this. This sir, is not sir, what it is. Present to us. Please. Okay, absolutely. This is not what it is. But I'd like them to see this. If yeah, not. okay. This is self storage the way it was 20 years ago mm -hmm. when this zoning was written. Mm -hmm. The new self storage that's out there and what this will be is similar to this, which is a three story building that has a brick facade on it and some EFIS, which is stucco facade on it. <clears throat> Uh, all right, nope. This is actually three. It does. That's a great question. It does look two, but it's just the way the windows are set up on it. Okay. So again, to confirm that, it's around 75,000 feet gross. These sorts of self-storage facilities, and, and let me just address also the access. That's been a huge mm -hmm. issue that's come up here regarding Blueberry Hill Road, which comes into Weaverville Road there. And it comes in at a, at a funny angle, which has nothing to do with us or the existing property owner. The way that is set up is the way DOT temporarily wants it set up. We've had meetings with them about it, and I feel in the future that's going to change, but DOT does not know what that's going to look like. This project will connect into that existing service road and will not have another access that goes out onto Blueberry Hill Road or Weaverville Road. There will be no change in the way that access is out there now. And unfortunately, we would not be able to change it to make it safer if we wanted to because that is strictly up to the North Carolina DOT. That's what they do. And so in this instance, I'd also like to address the usage here. So I heard one of the presenters and one of the neighbors indicate that this was, uh, that we had, had implied on the application that there were 10 <coughs> vehicle visits to this property per month. Um, the accurate, the, the accurate um, understanding in industry numbers on visits to properties like this are on average approximately eight to ten vehicles per day and so there's no intent to mislead anybody that was just a, a misinterpretation or a misread of what was said so in light of that compared to a hotel or a fast food operation a fast food operation were to be put in there it could be between 600 and 1,000 cars a day would go into it. That's what a standard quick serve restaurant facility has, which would be, in my opinion, uh, incredibly, an incredible misuse of that property and way too much traffic to, to handle that. From a traffic standpoint, this is one of the lowest traffic uses you could have compared to other approved uses in that zoning, which are restaurants, hotels, 
auto garages, car washes, dry cleaning, laundromats, mortuaries, and the like. And those are uses that are already <coughs> approved in the current zoning, which would be potential uses in lieu of doing something like this. Every single one of those uses is going to have at least 10 times, if not 100 times, more traffic than the proposed use that we have. In addition, this is a limited use facility. This is not open for 24 hours. It does not have lighting in it that causes light pollution. It does not have nuisance dump dumpsters full of old food or hotel garbage or whatever it may be. And it, it wouldn't be possible in my mind to know what you could put in there that would be a better fit for this property for that reason. I'm a self-storage developer. I don't do anything but build self-storage. So I'm not going to put uh, anything else on this property because that's not what I do for a living. I, I don't build other things. And we also are not purchasing this property. We are partnering with the current landowner to do the, the deal. And we will be majority owners of it. We are not some big corporation out of some you know, out of Charlotte. We are a small corporation of three people in Columbia, South Carolina, who have been in the, the real estate development business and brokerage business our entire lives. And so, you know, as far as addressing some of the concerns that came up, I think that addresses most of the major ones that I heard. Um, what I'd like to do now is address the board more directly with respect to what this hearing is about, which is to show, per the town, to, to show that the request that we have to rezone this property is reasonable and consistent with the comprehensive plan. And so we submitted a statement regarding this that's public information to the town that those of you here have seen that has eight or nine bullet points, nine bullet points on it here that addresses why we think this is consistent with the comprehensive plan. And I'm going to be relatively quick here in going down these, but first of all, it's consistent with the surrounding uses. You're on a business corridor there and you're, you have I-26 on one side and Weaverville Road and New Stock here along with Blueberry Hill Road. And we have a hundred foot buffer between us and the neighborhood. The residents uh, where, where these folks live to the north of us. In addition to it being a hundred feet, it is also uphill. So it's on a big grade and it's, and it's wooded. And per the, the previous restrictions and covenants on the property, um, that's required to stay the way it is. So, as I mentioned, you know, aesthetically, this is not what, what you see as storage when you think of, of rows of metal buildings that are exposed to the street. This building will have good visibility from I-26. It will have virtually zero visibility to the neighborhood, and it, it will have some visibility to Blueberry Hill Road. And re respectfully, I'd like to continue. This also meets the infill go goals as proposed by the town of Woodfin to develop infill properties, and I'm reading directly from town documents, develop infill properties and develop vacant and underdeveloped properties in the town, which this is. And this property disturbs two acres. This is not a bluffs development. We are not, we're, we don't have a 90 acre parcel on the river here. This is a two acre disturbed acreage parcel that has its own uh, detention for stormwater on the property. The proposed use is also in line with the urban land use goals that the town expresses in their comprehensive plans for the Weaverville Highway Corridor. 
It is, as I mentioned previously, it is low impact, it has low visual impact and low noise impact. This is not an industrial property where anything will be any, any sort of hazardous material will be on the property at all. It's against the rules in these facilities to even store gasoline in them. You cannot legally store any hazardous materials in here. This is household goods only. You can't even put lawnmowers in these facilities. It is against the, the regulations and the tenant agreement we have with, with all the tenants here. It also fits the future land use goals of the town per the comprehensive plan along this corridor, which proposes a future land use to be mixed use along this corridor. This fits with a mixed use property along this corridor. And lastly, it's worth noting that in the town of Woodfin, there's only 1.5% of the existing land or less than 57 acres of it that is zoned light industrial. The two major parcels of light industrial are very similar to this site and located south of this property along I-26 and Weaverville Road in addition to the other side of I-26 that are both listed as light industrial properties. And again, you know, to address the issue of, we have uncertainties about what's gonna be built there, and we have uncertainties that somebody's gonna come in and zone it and pull some reverse behind the back deal and go and try to redevelop something else. Um, that's not what our company does. Um, we don't, we don't build anything but self storage facilities. And we also, to address another issue, and this is the last thing I'll say regarding plans already being submitted to the town of Woodfin, that is also incorrect. The only thing that has been submitted to the town of Woodfin on this, on this project is what was required for this zoning here, which is a site plan, which they sent out to the neighbors along with the application to rezone. And also, I, I think due to the number of people here from the neighborhood, um, I would also like to have the landowner who has much more history with the neighborhood and in the property and the, the legal issues and the restrictions that govern the property, I think it's only fair as, the, as a landowner in the town that she also have a chance to, to address the board and, and the members of the community. Is that person here? Yes, she is. Oh, okay. Hi, first of all, my name is Glenda Weinert and I appreciate your time. I, I do want to address the neighborhood and the community. I think one of the goals that we have had for the number of years that we've owned the property is first and foremost to be a good neighbor. But the restrictions and the covenants that flow with that land, anyone that has purchased property in Woodland Hills has been aware of those restrictions as we have been. And when they purchase the homes, that land was already commercial property. It was not residential property. And one of the things that we wanted to do was to try and protect the buffer, to try and protect their backyards and the backside of the home, but also protect the investment that we have in commercial property. So there's not been legal wranglings. There's been no dissension for years. The only conversation that ever occurred was when we went back after the DOT informed us that the only place they would allow the driveway is where it is. We were permitted that, the DOT followed up with us and that's, that's what occurred. Um, part of it was moved down far enough so that it's really on the public 
bottom part of Blueberry Hill Road and not in the upper part of the neighborhood. And then the second part of it is any conversations that we've had subsequent to that legal situation and the DOT's ruling. The only conversations we've had have been in our attempt to try to be good neighbors, to go talk to them, to have conversations with them, and protect both of our investments, both their residential property and our commercial property. But the simple fact is they abut each other and both sides know that. So we are trying to be trying to be cognizant of that and protect that buffer so that it that this building is not anywhere near their homes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else? Who wants to speak to that? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is just the um, the landowner and the developer. Okay. Who are you? Oh. And this will take 30 seconds. Okay. Just one thing I'd like to clarify. Um, I'm Bowen Herger, by the way, and appreciate the opportunity to speak. And I'm not sure if everyone from the neighborhood realizes this or not, but there's been a lot of comments about the traffic and um, things that, that could come through there. The, the property is currently commercially zoned. Um, the uses that David named, fast food restaurant, um, you know, hotel, those uses are zoned by right now. Um, so I'd just like to clarify that the, the it could be a lot worse um, from that standpoint based on the way it's zoned now. The use that we are proposing is about as uh, benign and non-invasive as you could have. Um, just want to clarify that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're on, what am I doing now? Okay, so let's have some discussion amongst ourselves before we vote. Anybody wanna? I'll, I'll go first, unless you want to. Uh, you know, we are charged with the responsibility and <clears throat> sticking with the comprehensive plan. And I'll note, although the developer made some points about it, uh, we're, we're, we're accountable to the, the people in town and we need to create jobs. We need to create tax revenue. And in my personal opinion, I don't think rezoning this and allowing a light industrial use is the way to go. Okay, did you want to say something? Well, uh, at one time, this would be considered spot zoning. And because there's no other light industrial around. And I know for years that's been coming up in that area. Mm -hmm. But um, at this point, uh, I would not be in favor. Okay. Do you want to say something? Uh, I'm just concerned about the residential area as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the integrity of yeah, the residential too. area. Yeah, I would. I agree <coughs> with you, Jim. I think you know, we are supposed to stay in line with the comprehensive plan. The way I read the comprehensive plan and this proposed development, you know, I I think they're at odds. Even like I I, I don't think that that they're aligned. So, yeah. I do think that the last gentleman who spoke made a good point. It could be a lot worse, but that's not the question we're being asked right. to decide. That's right. That's not right. what's before us right now. Okay. Anyone else? Do you want to say something, Jeff? No, I'm good. Nope. Okay. So, is there a motion to... I'll make... Go ahead. I move that we adopt the following resolution. Resolved that the Town of Woodfin Planning Board hereby advises and com comments to the Board of Commissioners that the proposed map amendment is not consistent with the Town of Woodfin Comprehensive Plan. I'll second that. Okay. So, how about if we vote on it? How many people are in favor? In favor? Not. Of not zoning. Of not zoning. Oh, I'm sorry. No, a recommended <laughs> not doing it. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> recommended not doing it. Okay. <coughs> so, not. we're not gonna do it. Or are we, we're not rezoning. Okay. 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 So we're going to move on to item number four. And before we do, we are going to hear from the planning director. 
Yeah, please. Anybody who's. We couldn't hear you in the back. Sorry. Yeah, move around. Hang on one second. We'll Maybe just. Not, I'm more yeah. about that one with the knee text and then it's the whole thing. This is planning director Adrian Eisenhower. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's get everybody who's going ashore. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Let's take a let's take a five minute break. Just to restroom break and a water break and. What's even funnier is one of the big points I made when I applied for this position was talking about the self storage place down there on the and how much it can for anything. I can't believe that. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know why. 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 I don't
Show them all the houses. Oh my gosh. That hot, huh? I mean, I can't keep up. That's good. All right. Yes. Yes. I mean, yeah, it's helpful. Like, don't want to complain about it because I know at some point it's going to stop. But at the same time, I'm going to fall over. <laughs> I can understand that too. Sometimes, like, yeah. this is a little bit too much. A little bit too much. I mean, I just feel bad for people who you know buyers can't keep up. when I realize it's not. One of, my, um, one of my clients, I also do some stuff in South Carolina, and he's one of 15 offers on a house. Oh, my cow. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Right. I better put this back on. Somebody can say something. Yeah. Hey, hey Nathan, no, no cutting up from you now. Be on your best behavior. So, yeah, I want you on your best behavior. Oh, by the way, congratulations on that win. Excited you guys got to go to the game. Yeah, I guess I guess Mandy saw it on Facebook and she said you guys were up there and then I saw that they won in Cincinnati and I was like, oh, at least it was worth the drive. Do you want to know the emotions of that game? <laughs> a 17-year-old diehard oh standing gosh. a thousand feet above the goalpost to where we miss oh. and we miss. <laughs> And we missed. <laughs> oh, heartbreaking. Uh, but at least you win. A lot of misses to win, but you win. So we have. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Should I say it again? Well, you need to do it. 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 So first we'll let her speak and then I'll say it. I'm ready to go back to our other. Yeah, right. When I open the public hearing, and then I'll, I'll, I can read that again. Okay. Okay. Yep, you got a Are we getting ready? You got a gavel. Use it. Got my gavel. Okay. Do you want to? Introduce Adrian or? Sure, the, the planning director Adrian Eisenhower just like to make an overview um, presentation of what the next item for the board uh, prior to the public hearing. Yes. Yeah. So the next item is the ordinance amendments um, that were part of 160D requirements. Um, there are some additional amendments that were not part of that. So the purpose of this presentation is to go through those amendments. Um, the bulk of those amendments in the zoning ordinance took place in Articles 1 through 5. So I'll go through each of those articles and then the subdivision ordinance Articles 1 through 3. You'll notice through the presentation that there are distinctions on the amendments. If the, if the text shown on the screen is in red, that's a requirement of 160D. If it's blue, it's optional. And if it's black, it's um, outside of that context. So in Article 1, general, general provisions, we, um, I renamed the, that section to general provisions. It was in general. Um, we added the statutory citation of 160D, changed that from 160A to 160D. Um, and then in the definition section, the one requirement was that the definitions of building, dwelling, and dwelling unit be consistent with state building code. So the definitions that are now in the ordinance are verbatim from that code. Um, 160D also required that bedroom and sleeping unit be consistent with the building code, but we didn't define those and I didn't add them. Um, another requirement is um, relevant to the conflict of interest statute that I'll get to in a minute. We define <coughs> familial relationship close, outside of 160D, not required. Um, added definitions for all the permanent uses that are listed in the permanent uses table. They were not previously defined. So this clarifies better what the uses are and what's allowed where. Um, and in the, in the current ordinance, there are several sign definitions, but the code of ordinances has a sign chapter that has those same definitions. So those definitions were removed. Um, also in the general provisions section, we added language regarding the comprehensive plan and the changes um, in, the, in the zoning amendment world are, rel are consistent with, with that plan.
we amended the notice of violation procedural language to be consistent with 160D. So <clears throat> basically the notice of violation is delivered to the permittee or the landowner if it's different uh, by hand, email or first class mail and posted on site and certified for the file. Um, we've also added performance guarantee language for zoning approvals, um, 160D702. Uh, reads where appropriate a zoning regulation may include requirements that street and utility rights of way be dedicated to the public that provision be made of recreational space and facilities and that performance guarantees be provided all to the same extent and with the same limitations as provided for in, in general statute 160 804 which is a reference to subdivisions um, so we have made performance guarantees um, an option for zoning approvals as well to expand upon that a little bit, performance guarantees and this language is upda updated in the subdivision ordinance, um, which is what the zoning ordinance references for those. Um, so they're only for completion of required infrastructure. The developer can elect, the developer elects the type of instrument used for that guarantee, be it a surety bond or letter of credit um, or equivalent security. The amount cannot exceed 125% of the reasonably estimated cost of the of the infrastructure. Um, the initial term shall be for one year unless the developer elects for it to be longer um, and they can provide an extension at the end of that um, initial term if they are not complete with the infrastructure. And then once the infrastructure improvements are placed, the, the guarantee has to be released. As I mentioned earlier in the definition section, the 16D broadened the conflict of interest standards for staff and boards. Um, previously, the standard was, was for um, readily identifiable financial impact, and that has been amended to also include close familial business or other associational relationships. So board members and staff should not be making decisions um, if either of those things apply. It also clarified what happens um, with a board if a member refuses to recuse themselves um, and, and there, there's the perception of a conflict, the majority of the board votes on what happens to if that member should recuse themselves or not. So that, that's been added to um, the administration section for boards and staff. A lot of 160D is, uh, well, a, a, there's Clarification on vested rights and permit choice in 160D. So in response to that, we have defined site plan requirements so everyone's clear on what needs to be submitted for um, certain approvals. We've added a completeness review provision. So we've defined what a complete application is and what happens if it's not complete. Um, and we've added a permit choice provision. That's state statute, um, but we thought it might be good to have a local reference to that um, statute, and that is, um, if a application is submitted and a decision is, before a decision is made on the application, if the rule changes, the applicant can pick which rules apply. Um, and that is an option for the applicant for 18 months after that application is submitted. <clears throat> Additionally, we've recognized that building permits are valid for six months. Um, if no work is commenced after that, they are valid for a year unless work stops. Um, they are valid unless work stops for more than a year. And then we recognize that development permits are valid for 12 months, but we've also identified site-specific vesting plans as an option for special use permits and conditional zoning approvals. Um, so the, the vesting plans must at, describe the type and intensity of use for the specified parcel and identify boundaries and location. That approval would be valid for two years and can be extended for up to five years. The current ordinance has the planning, uh, uh, the authority for the Planning and Zoning Board of Adjustment. Um, the statute clearly defines the roles and responsibilities of a planning board and a board of adjustment. So I'm recommending that this board be split into separate boards, a planning board and a board of adjustment. <coughs> Each board would have five members. The board of adjustment would have two additional alternates. Um, that's more of a requirement in that realm. We've, we have um, amended the ordinance in the board section to cover the authority for each board. So for planning board, we 
explain amendments, ordinance amendments and that process. For Board of Adjustment, we explain the variances of special use permits and the appeals. Question? Do you want us to hold questions for Go ahead. you? Go ahead. I need some water anyway. Okay. Why, why would the Planning Zoning Board not have alternatives? I'm just alternates. I'm just curious. Planning and Zoning Board does have alternates. We just don't have those seats filled at this moment. Oh, each. Okay. The it's Planning board, board. The Planning Board. The requirements for the Planning Board and the voting on on matters that come to the Planning Board is not as strict as that of the Board of Adjustment. Okay. So gotcha. if somebody's going to be absent, we need to fill that seat. Definitely. Gotcha. Okay. The current code has the Chapter Two, um, which is titled administration, but it's relevant only to the Planning and Zoning Board of Adjustment. Um, so since we, since my recommendation is to um, dissolve that board and create the two new boards, taking the language that's relevant to those boards um, and moved it to the zoning ordinance um, section of the code, or taking, stricken that language from the ordinance, which effectively dissolves chapter two. We did slightly amend the special use um, standard language to be consistent with um, what is recognized by the School of Government to be recognized by NC courts. And we've added the conflict of interest language for boards that I've discussed earlier. The current ordinance has a provision that or a district referred to as mountainous residential district. That's obsolete, hasn't been used, so we've removed that language from the ordinance. We've added condition, reference to conditional districts under, um, under there, and I'll get to that in a minute. We did amend just reorganization. Um, we took the permitted uses chart that was in the ordinance and reorganized it by use type um, and put that in the appendix. And then under each district, we have made tables um, that have that the permitted uses for each district and the dimension requirements for each district listed there. So it just makes the ordinance a little bit more user friendly, um, depending on how you're, what you're looking at. So conditional districts, that was added um, at, from a clarification of 160D. So it allows a proposal and consideration of, a, of let me back up. So the applicant proposes and the government considers a map amendment. So the conditional district has um, strict guidelines that have to be followed in the site plan submittal. So what needs to be on that site plan, what that means. Um, this is an opportunity for more input from the public and more discretion of the board of commissioners um, on these on development decisions. So they, the, the petitioner can um, recommend certain specific conditions. The staff can do that. The Board of Commissioners can do that. Um, but it requires, if, if these developments abut a residential district, it requires a neighborhood meeting of, of the same neighborhood that would be notified for a special use permit of the same property or a rezoning. Um, and that has to happen with the developer and the community outside of the town being involved. <coughs> Um, that re that has to be reported back to staff with the submittal of the site plan. Um, and then also if the peak um, hour trips exceed a certain amount or the total da daily trip volume exceeds a certain amount, a traffic impact analysis is, re is required. Um, so once all that's done and the site plan meets all the requirements of the ordinance, they submit to staff for review that would then be sent to the planning board for recommendation to the board of commissioners. This is an option for all the zoning districts. It's a requirement for Mountain Village zoning districts. Um, the density requirements of the Mountain Village district have changed in response to that um, because of the open process and the, and the detailed requirements for the site plans. Also, the purpose of the Mountain Village district is high density, multifamily or single family residential um, with limited um, office or commercial type uses and so that the the density that's now in the ordinance is at least eight units per acre to go with the purpose of that district how did you choose those metrics uh, trips 200 and the daily and uh, trip volume and peak hour I looked at a lot of different example ordinances from around the state and that seemed to be um, that about the average of, of when that triggers a traffic impact analysis okay. that's an awful lot 
Yeah, that seems a little hard, but that's what I thought too. I'm open to suggestions. Okay. Yeah, we're talking about residential. Mm -hmm. Article 5, um, one of the things that 160D has clarified is that um, what you know as conditional use permits are now referred to as special use permits universally, so all that language was changed in the ordinance to be compliant. Um, there's also a recognition that te temporary health care structures should be allowed in all residential districts, so we've added that language. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we re reorganized the, the district um, tables for the permitted uses and the dimensional requirements. Um, and we added, we did add development agreement language. Is that? And I'll get to that in a minute. Um, the version of the ordinance that you have has the um, requirement that a special use permit be awarded for exceeding building height. Um, we are recommending that proposed change not be included in these amendments. Um, so if you agree with that and we get to the end of this, we'd like to make that motion be made. <clears throat> so development agreements, we added that because if you don't have it in your ordinance, you can't use it. So we thought this would be a good time to add that. Um, so this is for long-term, large-scale developments. Um, the vested rates for these developments is determined in the negotiations of the agreement. Um, the agreement would cover things like land use intensities, height setbacks. The developer would submit a master plan, and then that conversation would happen between um, the planning board and the board of commissioners taking the ultimate, making the ultimate decision on whether or not that development agreement is entered into. Um, so we just added that language so it's an option for big developments. We've also taken this chance, this opportunity to add administrative modern modifications as is um, authorized by 160D. So this would include allowing staff to make minor site design modifications um, like road configuration or building layout for approvals of special use permits and conditional zoning. Um, it also, uh, also um, allowed for staff to approve parking requirements and setback requirements, slight modifications to those. So um, up to five spaces or 10% for parking and um, up to 24 inches or 10% for setbacks. Is that normal in other municipalities? It's an option, it's new. Okay. It's an option through 160D, so I don't know the answer to that question. Gotcha. Um, I'm open to discussion on this. I'm open to suggestions on this. This is just an option for us to use so that once these big developments are approved, they don't have to go back through the whole process for these minor, minor adjustments. I, I do, Adrian. Um, I follow everything here, and I think it's well done. But my question is the, the ordinance workbook, everything here that's in red, is a change, either to strike it or <laughs> it. There are dozens, if not a couple of hundred changes. I haven't had time to go through all of these, and I'm wondering if y'all have. I mean, it's. I'm not quite finished with, that was the zoning ordinance. I gotta cover the subdivision ordinance, but if Wait, you want I'm me to sorry. stop. Okay. Real quick. Um, so just the requirements of 160D for this are the statute citations and um, the definition of what a subdivision is, is or is not. So that's been amended. Um, we recommend to change the authority for minor subdivision review to be administrative. Um, if the standards of the ordinance are met with the subdivision plat, it has to be approved. And the minor subdivision is four lots or less. And so we thought it made sense for administrative the staff to be able to make those decisions and the bigger subdivisions come through the boards. Um, we have amended the plat requirements and added a concept review option for those that want to, um, aren't quite ready for the preliminary plat, but want to get an idea of what they might need to add or, or take out. We've added concept plan requirements and much like the subdivision ordinance, I mean the zoning ordinance for application completeness, we've added that same provision to the subdivision for subdivision preliminary plats. And that's it. 
on that minor and, and I guess it, it, this might be just a suggestion if you're open to it but and I'm just looking at it as a, a property owner perspective but if you have a, a property parcel that sits beside you that is three acres and somebody wants to divide that into four homes that classifies as a minor subdivision correct my question is is I guess the, the public themselves or at least the homeowners right around it should probably at least be informed that the the property owner is wanting to subdivide it and build to possibly three more units on that one set of three acres is that not something that's normal kind of I just think I feel like we're starting to impact people then too on the the minor subdivision even though it is just a minor four homes it's not this ginormous development but in, in the case of a little micro community if you will four homes could impact it pretty heavily for instance I live on uh, Springbrook over here there's a little parcel of land that's available that I know they can put three houses on uh, it's, I shouldn't even say it's available but it, the family owns it if they were to put three houses on it it certainly would impact my my daily life with what happens up and down Springbrook Road or down however you want to do the portion so in that sense I would I think that it might would be more beneficial even in small minor subdivisions to allow the planning board to at least look at it yeah I, I agree with that too I don't know but I everything else thought, about the subdivision looks awesome I, I guess my thought process is if if those ordinance standards are met and I understand the community wanting to know yeah. about it but if the ordinance standards are met yeah I guess I'm, look, I'm looking at it I guess kind of trying to prevent it looking as if the town of Woodfin or the the planning and zoning board of Woodfin is not at the because we are supposed to be at the best interest of the community as well just in full transparency even if we say yeah you can do it you know we think that's perfect for the community that's our decision we have to live with it but if we don't give them the option to know about it at least the surrounding homeowners still then it kind of looks like in in mm. a hidden so, kind of vacuum okay. and we we unfortunately don't have the best track record for not being in that dark vacuum and, and that's neither here nor there that's something that happened before a lot of people were even around on the board so okay. um, that's just my my kind of view on that minor subdivision thing some of the stuff parking spaces totally good with you making the decision um, but some of these minor subdivisions Any more questions? Hmm? Any oh. more questions? No. Okay. Okay. Thanks, so Adrian. now we'll open the public hearing and I'll just. What time is it? 806. Okay. And it'll be the same as before, three minutes per person, and Adrian will time it and give you a little notice when you're getting close. Okay, let's look on the list. Uh, Eric Edgerton. Hey, good evening, everyone. My name is Eric Edgerton. I'm a land use attorney. I've been practicing in that area for 10 years now. Um, I currently work for the city of Asheville, and I advise boards like yourself on planning and zoning regulations and the best practices thereof. And so I want to talk to you tonight about one component of this proposed ordinance revision that is pretty alarming to me, which is the way that the conditional zoning is being proposed. Um, I was going to say utilized, but it's really not being utilized the way it's supposed to. So this tool can be enormously effective if done right. And I'm warning you now that the way this ordinance is drafted is not doing it right. And so here's taking a step back what that process is supposed to look like. It's supposed to have a series of triggers that will send a developer into the conditional zoning process if they want to do certain things. 
So for the city of Asheville, if you want to have a development of over 100,000 square feet, you have to do a conditional zoning. Or if you want to have residential development with 50 or more units, you have to go into a conditional zoning. And that sets up a dichotomy where developers come to a municipality trying to come up with the conditions that they're going to propose going above and beyond what's required in the ordinance in order to accommodate their much larger development. That's what's supposed to happen. Here, your ordinance as proposed lacks the trigger. You have one district that it will be used in, but there's no distinguishing of which projects will go in. And in all other instances, it's up to the developer to choose voluntarily. The only reason a developer would choose to use conditional zoning in those instances is to be relieved of the normally applicable zoning requirements. It would be a way to step down their requirements as opposed to comply with what's on the books and go above and beyond as this type of zoning is supposed to be used for. Until you build, build in a trigger to force developers into conditional zoning, this is essentially giving them an out when in, when in purpose it's supposed to create higher standards. So given that, I would encourage you all not to vote in favor or to recommend this and to table it until staff has time to build in the appropriate triggers that would make this ordinance be able to be used as it's intended. So until that happens, I can't encourage you to, to vote in favor of this ordinance. <coughs> Um, can I ask you a question? No, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Was there a question? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, you're entitled to run this meeting however you select. So if you have a question, I'm happy to answer wait, it. Wait, wait. He's talking to me and you're talking to me. It's the same. Thing. You're the chair. Yeah. Oh, so no, no. Same that's thing. Okay. If you have a question, you're absolutely no. entitled to ask it. No, I'm, I'm, that's okay. I'm okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next name is Kelly Cowan. Hi, my name is Kelly Cowan and I live at 17 Gray River Run. And I just wanna thank Eric for coming up and pointing that out. I'd also like to point out that one of your board members um, was hesitant to pass this ordinance because he hasn't had the time to review the information contained. I'd like to share with you a little bit of a personal story. Um, in December of 2020, my neighbor, neighbors and I met with the commissioners to express concerns regarding a proposed development on a 17 acre parcel in Woodfin. Excuse me, I'm a little nervous. Mm -hmm. Developers wanted to convert 17 heavily wooded acres into 58 single family homes. This parcel had never been developed, had old growth trees and steep slopes. Before approval, we asked planning and zoning and the commissioners how this development would impact surrounding landowners and the future Woodfin Wave Park. We had concerns regarding large equipment accessing the site and affecting traffic. We asked the commissioners to protect the streams and trees located on the site. We brought up the steep slope ordinance and asked them to adhere to the standards. We asked for an environmental impact study and brought up concerns about stormwater runoff and pointed out existing substandard culverts that needed immediate attention. We brought up concerns regarding the increase in traffic on substandard roads near school drop off zones and asked about the safety of our citizens. Many concerned citizens logged onto Zoom and begged our elected leaders to consider the bigger picture at every meeting. And what happened? None of these concerns were addressed. Not by the town commissioners or planning and zoning, none of them. Now let's think about that for a minute. More than 100 concerned citizens logged onto Zoom, wrote letters and showed up begging our elected leaders to do the right thing to consider the environment and support sustainable development. I fear our collective voices are being ignored. Unfortunately, all the concerns we had came true. That proposed development was approved under the old ordinances, which did not require a detailed site plan or a grading plan before approval. The information and contained on the original submitted site plan does not reflect the current stage of the project. 
This project was approved with minimal regulations. We've seen sizable earth moving equipment damage public roads. We've had a heavily wooded site clear cut. We've seen failing erosion control measures impact surrounding landowners, streams, and rivers. We've seen inadequate stormwater infrastructure fail, causing public roads to flood, impacting the safety of our citizens. After any rainstorm, even a small one, my neighbors and I cannot safely access the road to our neighborhood. Front loaders, heavy earth moving equipment must come in and remove all the silt and debris that leaves the construction site. We are impacted daily by inadequate development regulations and we must do better. This is unacceptable. As the climate crisis worsens, we need planning professionals to implement strict development regulations to protect our environment and quality of life. I'm here today to ask our elected leaders to adopt development ordinances that will protect the health and safety of our citizens. Please regulate development on steep slopes and adopt the Buncombe County Steep Slope Ordinance. Provide an opportunity for public input on this ordinance and others, and remain transparent and accountable instead of hiding behind closed doors and accepting payoffs from developers. I'm asking our elected leaders to listen to your constituents Thank and to make your, sustain your sustainable development a priority. Thank you. Okay. Nathan Muller. Hi, Nathan Miller, 46 Jonestown Road. I've been here a couple of times. Um, I want to take a few minutes just to say, you know, I'm, there were many things I heard early on that I was very happy to hear. Reference to the comprehensive plan. We were here just a short time ago, putting together something that gets us to be able to take the next step. Now, I know it was kind of a Band-Aid to get us to the next place, but I want you to keep that in mind while you look at these ordinances because there are things in there that are very disturbing. They're removal and, and I wanna just kinda of touch on three things. One is the meeting notice and access to information. Heard one of the board members say that they just got this heavy document with strike overs and additions and subtractions and I don't know how many of you are zoning professionals that know all the ins and outs, but I'm sure it takes time to understand exactly what you're looking at and exactly what is being proposed. The other thing is about the about meeting notices is that I hear, you know, when I watch development happen and hear about it, I'm always hearing about it last minute. Because fortunately in my case, I don't have a large parcel of land touching my property where they can go and build something that's going to be enormously big. But that doesn't say I won't be affected if it's down the block. Including the people, expanding that radius so we know what's going on in, in the development of our town and taking the time to listen to the people. Because I've heard they're building in opportunities for public input, but we haven't, outside of these meetings, I haven't heard of it and I don't know it. Don't know about it. There are people that would like to have input and know what's going on to be able to say, listen, I'd like to have this here. Or have you considered what else could be there and the impact of what is being proposed? The last two things you've heard previously, I think there are ordinances that should be considered right away rather than amending and cutting and slicing and dicing what's up there. We don't have, to my understanding, a steep slope ordinance. We're just letting them build whatever on whatever terrain they want is what it sounds like. Now, again, not an expert, 100 and plus odd pages that I can't review like this because it was up a few days ago, I believe. I mean, I try to check and try to check, can't find it. The other one is stormwater. I watched a video of a development and this water just running down the side of the mountain. I haven't been able to find out what those restrictions are and what penalties they have, developers have, if they violate it. I mean, is it a slap on the wrist? Listen, I'll go and build up whatever and just let it slide on down the hill and pay the tiny little bit of money once I can get my, because I'll make it back once I get those units built. So. I'm going to take a little note from our attorney friend here that spoke a, year, a little while ago about the comprehensive plan. Take your time. Use this material to have a conversation. Talk it through. Understand it before you make any recommendation to the commissioners. Because once you make your recommendation, he said it, they can take it or leave it. 
but they really weigh heavily on your, on your opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, John Noor. Good evening, members of the board. My name is John Noor. I'm an attorney and I represent several different groups and nonprofits who own property and are involved in the Woodfin community, specifically Ohm Sanctuary, which is a business in the community, has property in the community, and Mountain True, which is one of the partners in the Blue Wave that's uh, planned for Woodfin and, and uh, houses the French Broad Riverkeeper, whose sole purpose is to monitor water quality along the French Broad, including the section in Woodfin. They've asked me to come tonight to echo a lot of the concerns that were expressed by others, particularly Mr. Edgerton. Ask yourself right now, have you been able to read every page of the changes that are proposed, and do you understand what each of them do? I also sit on the Buncombe County Planning Board, so I sit in the same seats you do when I'm sitting in Buncombe County. And there is no way this kind of substantial change would come before that board without months of preparation to talk about the impact that it would have on the communities that we serve. One of those impacts relates to the conditional zoning. And it's already been pointed out. That conditional zoning process, and you can read the text, it says specifically, this new process, notwithstanding the requirements Upon request of the applicant, the Board of Commissioners may waive or vary a specific development standard or requirement if the Board of Commissioners find that such waiver is not contrary to the public interest. So every requirement that's in that packet right there can be waived if they choose to do so. The process that this Board has played in the past to ensure that public safety and health were maintained for large-scale developments taken away. If a developer participates in a conditional zoning selection process, this board may hear about it, but it has no role to play in deciding whether that's in the best interest of the community or not. These are just a couple of the huge changes that are coming in this process. Um, others um, that I'd note are, are related to uh, the points that were made. You all, or several people have communicated the need for additional protections for stormwater and steep slopes. Nothing new is proposed that I can see in this packet that would address those concerns that have been longstanding, despite the addition of a brand new process that has never existed in the town of Woodfin in its entire history, the conditional zoning process. Um, the TIA, the traffic impact that was, that was thrown up, uh, that's the developer's TIA. I work in this industry, I do this professionally, I have yet to see, maybe ask some of your other board members who've seen development pro projects come through, I have never seen a developer's TIA not say that it is in the best sense of the community and that it, the roads have the capacity to handle the proposed development. Not an independent TIA, that could be required by this board. And I guess to sort of sum up, what are the other issues you, what are the other possibilities you all could be talking about and presenting as a comprehensive reform to your zoning ordinance? that would allow for this to be a mechanism that gets Woodfin where it wants to be in the future with its zoning versus sort of a reactionary plan that is trying to staff's credit to fix some problems but needs more time and more involvement from the community before decisions are made that will ultimately come back on you and the commissioners. I'd ask that you delay this. I'd ask that you take the time to, do, to consider this. This board could have working sessions to make sure that you go through line by line that ordinance and understand what it does what the potential impacts of it is, uh, of it are. Do that kind of work before you put your signature, your vote on this. Because if you're sitting here today and saying, I don't understand everything that's in here, you shouldn't be recommending it to your commissioners. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Shelly Stanback. Stanback. Thank you. Last time I was here, that's when um, there was a big 170-page uh, thing presented to you and changes that very day. And um, I actually really did applaud you all for saying, uh, we're going to wait. And uh, now, you know, yeah, as, as a, there's public interest, there's a business, but there's also individual interest on why I'm here today. 
And it's, it's, it's really, we do have a future here that we're, we're here to protect. And I appreciate you all listening to this because the way this has all been going, the very first time I ever stepped in here was in 2020 um, because there was gonna be a planning and zoning meeting about this big development. And I got wind of it just uh, two days before Christmas Eve. And we, we really, uh, the public was, it was huge. It's like, it just came out of nowhere. And that's exactly kind of what I'm hearing everybody say, you know, treat us with respect because we are your people. And one of the things I wanted to point out is in 2005, the Woodfin watershed was protected and it was protected by different organizations and some funding that came from private, private interests and people and individuals. And some of those are right here today. Our family helped protect your watershed, this watershed. So it, we're not here just because it's, it's you know, a, a fun thing to do. We all know this is, you know, this is, this is very important. It's important to us because we are your people. And so what I'd like to just kind of end with is, is yes, you know, yes, Ohm Sanctuary has a, does, definitely has an interest. We employ people. We're about um, health and wellness. And our, you know, in our neighborhood, they, they're speaking to us. They're talking. They're interested as if I kind of know what's going on, which I, I keep trying to catch up, but the notices are very spur of the moment. I think there was, it was like, like all of these changes were like Thursday, and now there was like even some new ones before then. It's like we can't keep up. And so I just want you to know we're here because we want you to do the right thing. Because if you do it wrong, if you do it wrong this time, you know, this density in the population, it's going to grow and the development are coming and we need you to protect the impacts from the people and the impacts to our environment, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there two Autumn Pittmans? No, I didn't realize there was a second one. Oh, oh, okay. I had Actually, you, you, you wrote two different uh, zip codes. <laughs> That's why oh, I thought. I wanna, I wrote my business. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. It's a long day. You got it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hi. Long Let's day for all of us. Oh, all right, let me get my notes out here. Don't start the timer yet. Okay. Hi, y'all. How you doing? <laughs> so good evening, everyone. I'm Autumn Pittman. I'm a fellow community member. I live over in Richmond Hill. Um, I'm a neighbor and a concerned citizen about the growth of our community and how that will look for future generations. So Woodfin, where community matters. What does that mean exactly? What matters? Who matters? What is Woodfin doing to demonstrate that community does indeed matter? Right now, the town of Woodfin is working on an updated comprehensive plan, and with this, the opportunity to shape the future of Woodfin. You have the opportunity to take time and gather input and create a plan that takes to heart the needs and desires of the community. While looking ahead at how these ordinances put in place will impact future generations, how will these ordinances affect the overall health and well-being of the community. I've noticed a lot lately also a lot of effort going into greenways and blueways. Recently, Woodfin received a large grant to further these efforts. <clears throat> Extensive fundraising was done to help fund the future Whitewater Wave project. These are all wonderful offerings to the community, but if there are no stipulations in place for stormwater management or steep slope development, is it not counterintuitive to invest in these projects if there are no safeguards for these community investments? In the most recent version of the comprehensive plan put out just last week, height and density limitations have been minimized if not removed altogether. In the last PNZ meeting, stormwater and steep slope amendments were proposed and approved, and I believe the commissioners also discussed them at their uh, next meeting uh, following. So why in this proposal that we're seeing here tonight are those, those ordinances not included? And then what way does that prioritize the health and safety of our community and thereby, thereby showing that community matters? As the Planning and Zoning Board, in a sense, you are representatives for all who live here. Your job is to help create a template 
for the town that is livable, accessible for a thriving community. It is imperative that you take into consideration and prioritize the health and well-being of the community. Not just the people, but also the trees, water, and wildlife. What you do here today will make a difference for years to come. It is your duty to this community to allow adequate time for the process of creating this plan. <clears throat> to work with community members to create a plan that looks to the future of the area. The proposed changes were only posted on Thursday, and there have already been some changes since that time. Approval of any changes is premature. It should not be approved at this time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I skipped somebody. Ben Saylor. Hi, guys. Thanks for uh, sticking it out on this long meeting tonight. Appreciate it. Ben Saylor to Union Street. Um, I'd echo just what John and Eric said. Um, it sounds like this new, these revisions have uh, not been given ample time for you guys to review and doesn't have steep slope ordinance. Doesn't do anything to really protect. I mean, really the height uh, thing is something I'd like to speak to. We here in Woodfin look across the river. We're looking currently where the bluff is probably gonna go at a green mountain. And <clears throat> if we don't have anything in there with height protections, we're gonna be looking at like five story buildings. So I would, I would say put that in there. Um, all the things every, everybody else has said John Norton knows what he's talking about, what he's talking about. Eric knows what he's talking about. It should definitely be tabled for now. And you should uh, take some serious time, months probably to get this rolled out because it sounds like we're kind of giving things away to the developers. We're trying to trigger conditional use when something abnormally large comes through so that it's reviewed so that it doesn't screw up our town. We're trying to filter out the scumbags. That's what it's for. So, um, yeah, I would urge further review of this extensive revision of the uh, zoning ordinances. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Robert McGee. Hopefully that's not with the, in the future. With your <laughs> right. I mean, with climate change, maybe. Pictures. Uh, oh gosh, I wish. I'd be Robert there. McGee, <laughs> I have a home at uh, Five Martell Village, historic Martell Village, 95-year-old house. And so one thing you find yourself doing when you have a house that's almost 100 years old is you wind up in Lowe's a good bit, <laughs> buying things to keep it together. Um, and I was in there the other day, and I saw Christmas decorations. And I know it's hard to remember what month it is with the pandemic and everything, but I was like, already? Really? Keep going down this rabbit hole with me for a minute, because then I thought about the movie It's a Wonderful Life. You know this movie? You've seen it with Jimmy Stewart, Donna Reed, and I thought, I thought of you. I thought of Woodfin. I thought, here we have this chance to do things right. We can have the Jimmy Stewart Woodfin, where you have community discussing things. Maybe you have a big mountain village development coming up, so you get 30 days notice, not just 10 days notice, because that's a big deal. Any, anything that has uh, more than 200 cars would trigger conditional use review. Anything that has a height over three stories definitely would need to uh, trigger that conditional use review. And, um, cause do you know, have you seen the movie? I know you can't talk back to me, but just raise your hands if you've seen the movie. So you've got Bedford Falls and you have the alternate reality where Jimmy Stewart is maybe uh, has died or thinks he's died or he's gone to sleep. And there's old man Potter. Old man Potter just wants to come in and just take what he can get. He just will build anything. And as a result, you get more crime. You get no community. You have violence. Properties are in disrepair. And nobody really cares. So I'm just saying you've already heard all the things. We want steep slope ordinances. We want um, stormwater <laughs> control because, I mean, my house would be underwater. And so just think about, do you want to be the Jimmy Stewart Woodfin or do you want to be Old Man Potter? So it's up to you. I also suggest that you read through the document, take your time, because once again, 
it just feels like you're rushing, rushing, rushing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Tracy de Blasio. notes. <laughs> um, Tracy Blasio, 30 Robin Lane, Asheville. Um, I think what we're really looking for is just to try to remove conflicts uh, so that we're not constantly having this tension and having to disagree on every single thing that comes before here and having to decide who's the lesser evil from earlier. Um, I think looking at protecting existing owners and the environment one of the big changes we saw is actually wasn't in the slideshow, but Adrian made a quick mention to it is removing the density in Mountain Village. It went from a maximum of eight that was approved back in December after the moratorium and it actually reads that that becomes the minimum. So even though it's high density, it's higher than all the others, including the apartment buildings and R7 and R10. So I think that's something that we have to seriously think about not approving that type of change. I think if we do a good job with setbacks and buffers and meeting notices, having complete applications, adding steep slope ordinance from the county, reducing the amount of impervious service surface that can be used and in doing independent traffic studies, allowing people to participate during Zoom, particularly because of schedules with families or jobs or just it's a pandemic. I think if we close loopholes that we have like the CZ process, um, we can again have less and less conflict and really build Woodfin for the future. So it's a sustainable place for all of us, including the environment. Uh, and I just hope that we don't see the height change come back that we removed the CUP from that it only got done the last couple of days and it's something repeatedly we've asked that it stay in there the city has the right to regulate height of 35 feet okay thank you <laughs> Kelly Warner I chose to write about something very different than I've spoken about in the past. 42 years ago tomorrow, my father's body was found by coon hunters at 3 a.m. in the French Broad River. Missing a month, he had taken his life in that roaring water. Why am I mentioning this intimate a disclosure at a PNZ meeting in Woodfin to a group of strangers? because I never thought all these years later that I would be working towards keeping the health of the river a top priority. I hated the French broad for claiming him, but as with any suicide, the answers are rarely known. Could it have been his freeing the concentration camps with the 14th Armored Division in World War II, the atrocities he witnessed at 19 in the Battle of the Bulge? Who knows? One thing I do know is that the river was a place my father often went to, not to fish, but to sit by and think about whatever was on his mind. Growing up here, I saw the river every day from my treehouse. I watched its silver shimmer when the sun hit it at the right time. As a family, we picnicked by the river and we hiked the forests that abutted the river. Over the years, I have learned to appreciate the value of our rich ecological area. The river has become a friend. I too go and sit by it almost daily, and I worry about its future. Whether climate change is on anybody's radar in Woodfin, whether you believe in it or not, it can't be denied that weather patterns are becoming more extreme every year. Woodfin has had great foresight in supporting the wave and the Riverlink Park, but at this juncture, much more stringent ordinances need to be enacted for steep slope construction, stormwater runoff, and the saving of our mature forests 
if we want a healthy river and community. The stronger the environmental restrictions, the more likely we will all be able to enjoy the beauty of our river, the coolness of our mountains, and the fresh taste of our water. Though the river has taken its share of sorrow and its share of human trash with it to the Gulf of Mexico, we as a community can change our positions from short-sighted greed to long-sighted healing. <laughs> what legacy are we willing to leave for future generations? Though my father is gone, he lives all around me and I feel his presence while I'm sitting by the banks of that force of water. I know he's proud that I and others in this community are willing to spend countless hours working for a win-win for Woodfin. He fought for our country. It's time we fight for our trees, our river, our air, and our water, and it's time we be the voice for them for a change. Thank you. Will you? Thank you. Okay, uh, there's a Bernie Costers, but he lives on Blueberry Hill Road, so I'm thinking that maybe he already left. So that is everybody on the list. Uh, unless there's anyone else? Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Nope? Okay. So we're going to close this at 8.39. And Am I allowed to ask a question? Go ahead. Just a, John, just a quick question for you. Yes, sir. The email you sent Jim this morning that he distributed out to all of us, why wasn't it sent to all of us? Hmm. I, I gave it to Jim because he and I had communicated about proposed amendments, and I didn't want you all to just receive something from me out of the blue without knowing why. I figured Mr. McAllister would share it with you if he felt appropriate, but that was the reason. Oh, I don't like getting I, stuff from attorneys, but I know who you are, I guess, you know. But that was the main reason why. I'm happy to talk with anyone else about questions that they have in relation to my clients on this legislative proposal. Yeah. I was just, just more curious than anything. I don't like to feel left out. No, I, exactly. I didn't leave anybody else or circum yet. circumvented. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's the um, appearance, I guess. Okay, thank you. So, any other questions? Do we have some discussion? Yeah, dude, I'll go first. And go I, I apologize for getting ahead of myself uh, earlier because the comment is good. But a little jumpy because I spent a lot of the weekend and the better part of the day plowing through this. I drove Adrian crazy this afternoon with question after question, you know, trying to understand. One of the good things, though, that's happened in the last few days, I've learned that there are a number of people that I just happen to be acquainted with, like John. We've worked in the past on something together, that as we post these things on, on the town's website, which is awesome, that they're reading them, and they're trying to understand them, and they call people like me and maybe you with questions. So I'm heartened by that, but what I'm a little disheartened about is that it, it turned out to be bigger than I thought it was when I met with Adrian and, and Eric last week. I focused mostly on the slideshow, and it hit me Saturday that, holy smokes, they gave me this for a reason. And everything in red and some other colors in here, anything not black is a proposed change. And I, I can't, and, and while almost everything I've seen is good, I've got sections with the blocks of questions. So I, I'm not prepared to, to recommend, you know, personally I'm only one vote, but I, I hope that we take some more time and perhaps have what Adrian referred to as a working session to me this afternoon, because I'd like to learn where some of the rationale for some of the changes came from. I'd like to have some questions answered. So that's how I feel, and I'm, I'm curious how you feel. Anyone else want to comment? Just us? Uh, you know, just kind of in, in light of everything, I, I have read through it all. I am not a, a, a expert in zoning laws or ordinances or anything like that. Um, I have highlighted some, some things that just I wanted to ask some questions about and possibly clarify with you too, Adrian. Um, unfortunately, uh, because of my position, I didn't have a chance to, to 
contact you over the last few days to ask you and clarify and so that's on on me uh, being out of town but um, I know we do also have another meeting this week um, I am not opposed to another special meeting being called before the commissioners meet um, however uh, I think we're moving in a good direction there are some things I'd like to see added to it not necessarily taken out of it I like the way a lot of it reads um, but it doesn't necessarily cover everything right now that I think it should. What, can I ask what your changes I'd, are relevant to um, that? I'd love to see something steep slope. I'd love to see something, you know, in, in terms of um, just more studies on the environment. I know, and guys, you're, you are not going to like me for saying this one bit, but some people mentioned impervious surfaces and storm runoff, and I've expressed this concern with Adrian too. Uh, I am more environmental by nature than I am whatever, you know, <coughs> buildings or, or that being said. And John, correct me if I'm wrong, we all know that if you build up the less pervious or non-pervious surface you have. So you have more ground if you build up a little bit higher to soak in some of the rain off. With that being said, I am not necessarily for every building being 20 feet taller than our current statute. Um, I do think there should be some conditional things about that. Kind of more concerning, not necessarily height structure, but more does it fit where it's going to be. Does that make sense? So not necessarily, I'm, I'm not conformed to height, and I'm sorry if that offends anybody. I am more conformed to does it fit the community, does it impact the neighborhood and is it going to make the well-being of the property owners a hardship or is it going to help them and that's where i'm coming from so it's not necessarily a height driven argument on my behalf it's more of a how does it fit in the community okay Thank my you. wife told me that y'all would hate me when i said that but <laughs> i just felt that i needed to say that you're honest that's good okay, okay. Uh, Anyone else want to say anything? I agree with you. Uh, I mean, I, I, I do. Um, I don't think we've addressed water in here, have we? So I think it's important to note that these changes came about in response to 160D. Yeah. Right. There was a July 1st deadline to get those done. We did rush through that because of that. And that July 1st deadline is still there. Still so we need to get something adopted on the book, even if it's just the requirements of 160D. And if that's what we need to do, I can go back through the ordinance and identify what those requirements are and come back to this with the other stuff. But I've also been working on stormwater and steep slope, and I'm just not ready to bring that to you yet. This okay. is not part of this discussion. This is That's a whole separate conversation I will go into detail with you on. So that's it, not what this is no. about. This so it is, doesn't need to be in this. It's not the last time we're ever going to look at the zoning ordinance. This was in reference to 160. I think that might be where some of the confusion out there is, too, is mm -hmm. this isn't the final plan. It's, no. We are going to add stormwater. We are going to add. Can, is there a time, uh, uh, just a random time frame on that, Adrian? Mm -hmm. Kind of when you would pre present, start putting it out to, for people to see or comment on? I'm or? hoping to have something to you by the end of the year on steep slope. <laughs> okay. Um, Can you describe what you've done to date? I'm, I'm, I'm contracting with Landis Sky Regional Council. One of their planners is helping me draft the steep slope ordinance. That's why I know it'll be by the end of the year that I can bring you that. Um, reviewing Buckham County. Reviewing Buckham County. Reviewing Buckham County. Reviewing Buckham County. Is that applicable to us? Yes. I'm so, actually meeting with him on Wednesday to, yeah. to discuss what he's come up with on that. Um, We've also contracted with Anchor QEA to review our stormwater ordinance and recommend changes to that while um, developing procedures for staff to use and plan review for that so we can bring stormwater review in-house. It's currently handled by Buncombe County and we want to bring that um, closer to us so we have a better control over it. Um, I'm meeting with them tomorrow to talk about next steps on getting that process started. So that'll be by the first of the year we'll have something to you on that. So okay. it's all in the process. Good. It's just not ready for you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Um, the person who's raising their hand, this is our time to oh, discuss okay. before we vote. I just want to make you aware of that. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Would you like to say something? Well, I've, I've been out of town and I've tried to read through all this. But I really feel like I need a little more time to absorb some of it. Okay. And really know what 
All right. Mm -hmm. So, hey, question. Yeah. Go ahead. I know the, the commissioners had a working session, and Adrian, you mentioned that this afternoon, as did Jay. Well, what happens in a working session? Is it private? Is it public? Any, any meeting of a public body, including you all, that's more than, uh, um, as a quorum, so more than the, the majority, oh, right, yeah. to the majority, is by definition a public meeting. So those are advertised too. Now, the week may be a little bit different for a work session. Those are generally informal. It's not a public comment period of time, but emails are always flowing. That's not the nature of a work session, generally speaking. Um, and so we met with you all individually just to see what questions you may have also for this purpose, for that to have that exchange. Um, so with this board, we met individually or two at a time just to hear what's, what's on your mind and hear what you're hearing and what potential feedback you would have to Adrian as she's providing this text to you. Um, so that's what has happened. So if, if you did that, somebody like John or even Eric or some of the other people that you know have expert knowledge do they are they allowed to participate and help us in that discussion or is that not the way it works they, they may attend they listen yeah. and it's not the nature of those they can do like they could they could listen the dialogue is between staff and and elected officials or there was that type of we could always hold a yeah. public listening session that would be a conflict of interest I'm sorry that would be a conflict of interest. What would? Just in, in, in this disregard, John, I think that's what you're saying. If we use John because he is so vehement, vehemently on the other side of this fence, he does have a conflict of interest on some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's just an example for this one scenario. Yeah, John. Not that we don't want you. Yeah, just a, a random attorney. Mm -hmm. A random law. What about a random citizen who happens yeah. to have a lot of experience and might be able to help I think us what, with some of these issues? I think we need to resolve it amongst ourselves. This was also. I think we need to listen to the people of the town. More well, than that's we what are. they came and talked to us about. But we need to talk about this amongst ourselves. That'd be a good starting point. But I don't know that we can get something this significant and a few days later come together if everybody hasn't done a thorough review of it. Well, no. Okay. My opinion. Okay. Think you can. <laughs> what what happens next? <laughs> so if there's no more discussion, if yeah. there's more discussion among you all, if, if there's not, if you're ready to resolve and wrap up the conversation, then you may ask if there's a motion. Okay. So do I? Does anyone have a motion? I, I would Jim? like to move that we take some more time um, to review this, and that we have staff talk to us, answer our questions and make sure that everybody has had a chance to go through the whole document. Um, okay. Do you, I may be the only one that feels that you're way. Making, he's making a mo motion. Did, does anyone second it? It's not a very specific motion that we delay it until a certain day. We can uh, that's the, maybe discussion on the motion. Do you, do you hate it or? I feel, know, I hurt my feelings. I just. Uh, I, feel, I feel like we need some sort of a, a deadline because the, the town itself it, it is on a deadline you know per our per our last meeting what we're going through granted we have to have something in place by 2022 but also we we have to have something in place so we can do business as a town unfortunately we are, are in the hot the rock in the hard place i don't think this is a perfect solution um i'm totally agreeing upon allowing time for everybody to read it and understand it but i do think we need a time frame because the town's on a time frame okay i'm with you okay. what do you think i mean given that you've read everything you may be the only one i, I spent a lot of time at doctor's visits waiting on stuff this weekend so i had plenty of time to read through stuff um you know i, I again I, I i'll throw out a week does everybody would you have enough time in a week to read it process it ask adrian whatever time adrian or eric whatever questions we might have and then put it back on for a special special session let's meet next week again special time whatever let the public know come in this is what I, i'm just this is my question if it's not allowed just tell me it's not allowed then that seems to be what what we're looking at okay our special sessions not allowed well they're, they're certainly allowed but the timing thing is okay is a, that's special in terms of a working session 
I think we could work around that, but in terms of a special meeting, mm -hmm. that requires well, certain notifications. And well, yeah, the special meeting would just be to come back and either approve it to go forward or well, stable it. Uh, one thing about it is that you know, once this this board uh, if has not provided a recommendation to the commissioners within 30 days after initial uh, presentation here, the board, the commissioners can proceed without any Absolutely. recommendation. Absolutely. And so you would certainly want to have your input. So to the extent that you know, a working session or something like that can be worked out that would address your concerns, I think those would be appropriate. Uh, maybe once you have one or one of those, or maybe, I don't know, whatever, then you look at a special session of this board to consider. When when did that 30 days start? After today? Well, it starts today. That's, I mean, this is when it was presented, so yeah. day, day now. Right, right. So do so we. That's why I, I would recommend that, it, you know, I, I don't know what is the next meeting. Is it 30 days? 29 no, days? It's in three days. Three days. <laughs> that's a special meeting. Well, that, well, that's a special meeting. That a special meeting can only you can only talk about the topic that yeah. was advertised. Okay. What I was going to ask us is, do we want? Are we talking about having a session where we meet and we go over it together and try to understand it and ask Adrian or Eric whatever <coughs> questions, and then we have? Of, of an actual formal meeting where people come I mean we need to do that first don't I, we I think there's no other options and just I, we're not going to find a resolution tonight with where no. we sit so I mean I so, think that's our path forward so our path forward is a work session where all of us can meet and discuss this okay okay all right what do we need to do this now do we need a motion for that all right I think I need to withdraw or amend my motion. Oh, okay. I think it might make sense to amend it that we I can't always we allow it. ourselves during the daytime. Do we allow ourselves <laughs> another week to finish processing this and ask the staff questions? Okay. I can do it in a week. You want someone want to second that? I think we need to we can come in together and not oh, individually. Yeah. I think it needs to be a session. It doesn't have to be a Yeah. 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 And it doesn't have yeah. to be long if we're all if we're all prepared. Like if we all do if our we're homework, all prepared, we right. all do our assignment, right. we can do our work in a week and come back and hopefully bust right. something yeah. out that's reasonable. Okay. Can we meet Monday the 18th? Hey, can y'all meet <laughs> Monday the 18th? Sure. Monday the 18th? Please. In the evening? I cannot do that. You can't? No. Nope. Okay. I got short time. <laughs> What's short time? I've just got short time. When, I've got things going on. When can you meet? Lord, I don't know. I got too many things going Can on. Can anyone else? Everyone else meet? What's then? the date again? What's the the date? 18th, Monday the 18th. Is this for the work session? The work uh -huh. session. Can y'all meet? Adrian. I can do the 18th. I can do the 18th. Well, I, well, it depends on if they can. Everybody do the 18th. Susanna can go on Thursday. Okay. That'll work. <laughs> I'm good with it. Okay. So Monday the 18th. Exactly. And. <laughs> I'm huh? sorry. 6.30? Uh, 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 six? I've got to take my dad to six? the doctor. Even better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 6, 6 p.m.? Monday the 18th. Monday, Monday the 18th, 6, 6 p.m. Uh -huh. okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I saw and this is going to be a work session, so, yeah, and we need to read over. Kind of take care of him and his yard. Yes. I've got Good. I've got property in Burns. Yeah, yeah, I took care of him. So it's kind of like okay. I've got a procedure going okay. on. Okay, that's, what, we'll, that's what we're doing. It's a lot of stuff. Uh, 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 regular procedure. It's on my neck. It's uh, RFA, I believe. Wait, go ahead. What, what was the motion? Didn't need a one the, for To delay a week and have a work session. On Monday the 18th at 6 p.m. I recommend that rather than say, Take it for a week. The work session wouldn't be a, an official meeting. Right. It'd just be a work session. Right. So uh, we have to do another point, meeting. If there was a motion to table it. It would be to either a special meeting or a okay. or the next meeting. Okay. But not to a, you don't table it to a work session. Gotcha. Yeah. So okay. So we're tabling it we're to. Not I'm sorry. We're not tabling it. <laughs> we are. <laughs> 
Yeah, we are. No, no, we're yeah. tabling it. We're, we're tabling it to the next meeting, which would be when? Well, you, you don't necessarily have to specify that date because if you decide to call a special oh, meeting, okay, okay, you gotcha. address it there. Okay, so we're tabling it to? And the, and the chair can call a special meeting. Uh, that, that's how that process under the current statute. The chair can call a special meeting. Is your counsel then that this should be to a date? No, just to just say table, table and we're done. Right, and then you okay. can make a decision about how you want to address it in time. That okay. leaves you some options. So I need to amend my motion that we simply table this discussion yeah. until a further time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll second. Uh, second it. Um, all in favor? Okay. I do have a comment that I want to make. I, I'm, I am concerned. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We just voted. Okay. Do you want to comment before we vote? Or? No, no, no. You already no. voted. We just voted. Just voted. Oh, we voted. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am concerned that... If we're not going to be able, every week we go without steep slope and stormwater ordinance gives some developer, some builder the opportunity to file for a permit to build, and we don't have any restrictions. It is staff's recommendation that we do not adopt ordinance that we've not reviewed, and so I mean we're we're, we're working on that, and so I, I understand the predicament. We're all in this together, and that's why we're working to get that done. So and I'm thrilled that you're working to get it done so fast. So, so just, what is the alternative to to that? Well, we've discussed temporarily adopting Buncom counties in the past. So, so that's not so, going to So, okay, then. It's not going to happen. I understand. I just want, I, I, I phrased it as a. Maybe, it may be, a, maybe you just like it. But I think it's, there, there's a process to right. get there. So just as you don't want to see something and just adopt We've got to review it, too, to understand what that is. I expressed and it as a comment, and I meant it to be a comment encouraging and praising Adrian for doing the work, and please mm -hmm. don't let up, mm -hmm. because I think, again, my opinion, Steve Slot's the most important thing we can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we've tabled it, right? Yeah, we've tabled it. And yes, can we, we adjourn the meeting? Do you want to call a special meeting? Uh, do I do that now, too? You can do that now. Okay, so. You don't have to talk. She, she doesn't have to talk. Because she can. Yes, she can. That was the question. But we don't know when. Uh, because yes, we did the 18th at 6 o'clock. No, this is, this is our work session. Yes, that's what you're talking about. Oh, what's oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm, we're going to call a special meeting for a work session on Monday, October 18th at 6 p.m. I thought a special meeting was different than a work session. Yeah, I know. It, that's what I thought. This is having a work session. Okay. All right. Okay. And that's. And then after that, you'll call the special meeting. And then we'll call. We'll just have it at the regular meeting in November. Oh, good. Okay. Good. Oh, yeah, I thought there was a lot. But I thought there was a lot more urgency that we act immediately. You all decide differently. That's your prerogative to decide differently. You have the prerogative to decide differently. No, I'm, I'll go with the rest of the regular meeting. It must be a regular meeting. Yeah. Okay. Be. If that's the best way to do it, I'm getting no, it. it must be. It's required to be. Is what okay. says. Well, that's very different. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, are we finished? Can we adjourn? Yes. Make a motion, a motion to motion? adjourn this meeting. Second. 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 Okay. All in favor? Uh -huh. Yeah.